Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the solemnity of the most sacred heart of Jesus. We offer ourselves to him. We want to unite ourselves with him so that he will strengthen us in our spiritual journey to eternal life. Let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We shall say the Gloria. Glory to God, God in the highest, and on earth peace, peace to people, people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayers. For you sit at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who glory in the heart of your beloved Son and recall the wonders of his love for us may be made worthy to receive an overflowing measure of grace from that font of heavenly gift through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for 40 years now the Lord, your God, has directed all your journeying in the desert, so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial song. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Okay. 
Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has granted peace in your borders. With the best of wheat, he fills you. He sends forth his command to the earth. Swiftly runs his word. Praise Praise the Lord, Lord, Jerusalem. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinance he has not made known to them. Praise Praise the Lord, Lord, Jerusalem. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we, though many, are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The word of the Lord. Lo, the angel's food is given to the pilgrim who has striven. See the children's bread from heaven, which on dogs may not be spent. Truth, the ancient types fulfilling, Isaac bound, a victim willing. Paschal lamb, its lifeblood spilling, manna to the fathers sent. Very bread, good shepherd, tend us. Yesu, of your love, befriend us. You refresh us, you defend us. Your eternal goodness send us in the land of life to see. You who all things can and know, who on earth such food bestow, grant us with your saints, though lowest, where the heavenly feast you show. Fellow heirs and guests to be, amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed the, them to the little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by the Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. No one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find your rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So as Father uh, Joel uh, told us, this is a solemnity of the most sacred heart of Jesus. And uh, we were on the wrong reading there, and there's nothing worse than getting up and looking at the Gospel and finding out it's not what you did the homily on. Your heart kind of starts sinking as you look at that. Anyway, this is the right, this is the right one. Just had to find it. So, uh, the sacred heart of Jesus. What we're, we're, we're coming today to, to remember is how incredible large Jesus' heart is. How big it is. And, and, it, and it's, it's bigger than any of us can ever imagine that we cannot comprehend how big his heart is. Remember when he was on the cross and Jesus looked down and said, 
Father, forgive them. They do not know what they're doing. These are the people that are put the nails in our Lord's hands and his feet and hung him on this cross. And he says, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And he's telling us all that today, too. He tells every one of us that. Father, forgive them. Forgive us. Because we don't know what we're doing. And the reason he tells us this is because life is hard. And he knew it was going to be hard for us. It's very hard because we keep, every day of our lives, we keep being pulled away from him. Pulled away, pulled away by the things of this world because the world does not want us to be with him they want us to be with them and so they 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 pull us and they pull us and they pull us away but jesus tells us in the gospel today that this yoke we have to wear is not necessarily that bad all of us have to wear a yoke. All of us have to, have, to, have to wear something to carry our burdens on them. And that's, and that's what he was talking about 2,000 years ago. And this is something that's been going on for millennials for 10,000 years. The, they, would, they would make the leather yoke to fit the oxen. Because oxen, like people, are different sizes. Yes, some are really big, some are smaller. And you can't put a big yoke on a small oxen. Otherwise, it'll just flop around and wear on him. You can't put a small yoke on a big oxen. It'll tear at their skin. So there needs to be a perfect fit. And that's what Jesus is telling us. If that we walk with him, this yoke that we have on us won't be bad. We have to have a yoke, but it won't be so bad. And this burden that we're carrying around with us by this yoke that we have on, this burden could be light. And so many, many of us in our society today carry heavy, heavy burdens. We carry our sins on us that we won't let go, that we won't go to confession. So they just, they just fill up this, this gigantic wagon behind us, these sins that hang on us, and they won't go away because we won't let them go away. We, we have all these, these things, these habits in the world like, like drugs and gambling and pornography and, and um, uh, alcohol, these, these things that pull us down and pull us away from God. And we won't let them go. We won't let them go and they weigh us down. Our burdens are so heavy in this world. So, so terribly heavy. But if we turn to Jesus, as he tells us, if we turn to him and we walk with him and we pray to him and we, we love him with everything we've got and we go to confession, these burdens will become light. We'll never get rid of all of our burdens because the world is, is hard. Sometimes we lose a loved one or a child or a parent financial difficulties, things that, that tear, tear families apart. These things hurt and they're, they're heavy burdens. And, and sometimes they're hard to get rid of, but Jesus can make them light. He can make them bearable. He can make them so that we can carry them. And we only do this through his sacred heart, through his, the love he has for us that we turn around and have for him. Today is a solemnity, so we're going to say the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. 
begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us now present our petitions to God the Father Almighty. For our Pope, bishops, and priests, that they may offer this holy sacrifice today with reverent devotion, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For Catholics throughout the world, that the meaning of the Eucharist may bring us closer to God, so that we may find peace in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all of us, as we come to the supper of the Lord, that we will accept this gift as the true body and blood. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For an end to the coronavirus and healing to all those who have it. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all those who are not able to receive the precious body and blood of our Lord during this time, that they may feel his presence within them through prayer, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all those who are sick and who are dying, for those who have died, and for those whose names are written in the St. Jude Book of Intentions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And for the repose of the souls of Helen and Fekoslav Stupica in this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Almighty God, accept our prayers in union with the perfect prayer of your beloved Son, the one acceptable victim and eternal priest who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness who have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness who have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands to become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite hearts, we will be accepted by you, O Lord. And may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Look, O Lord, we pray, on the surpassing charity in the heart of your beloved Son, that what we offer may be a gift acceptable to you and an expiation of our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always 
and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For raised up high on the cross, he gave himself up for us with a wonderful love. He poured out blood and water from his pierced side, the wellspring of the church's sacraments, so that one of us, to the open heart of the Savior, all might draw water joyfully from the spring of salvation. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Yes, Lord. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I have not worthy that they should enter into my room. But I will say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. of Christ.
communion together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you with all my heart. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already in my heart and unite myself to you completely. Please do not let me ever be separated from you. Let us pray. May this sacrament of charity, O Lord, make us fervent with the fire of holy love, so that drawn always to your Son, we may learn to see him in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying our Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God.